right, glad you're back with us. This is Heath Close with Build Box, and I'd like to welcome you to part seven of the Make Your Own Game series. In part six, we learn to animate menu elements by animating our main menu and our game over menu, and we also added music and sound effects to our game. Now in part seven, we are going to make multiple game modes to choose from. We're going to add a turbo mode and a hard mode, and I'm going to show you how to make multi-level menu navigation that we can use to navigate to our new game modes, including locked start buttons on each mode for the player to work toward. In part three, we went over world settings in great detail, and one of those settings inspired this comment. I see a turbo mode in Glitch's future. We'll keep this in mind for down the road. This is something we will definitely revisit later. Let's make that turbo mode right now. Making a turbo mode may be easier than you think with the power of BuildBox. In fact, we could easily make one right now with the world we have in only a few short steps. Let's start by duplicating our world. Yep, you heard me right. We can duplicate entire game worlds. Let's select our game world and press W, A, S, or D to duplicate it. Now we have enough for a turbo mode, a hard mode, and whatever other mode you can think of. So before we go any further, we are going to name these worlds so we know what's what. Let's name our original world node World 1 Original, then name another one World 1 Turbo, and another one World 1 Hard. And we'll leave these other two for whatever inspires us, maybe even more worlds, and just use what's already there as a sandbox to copy and paste from. So let's just name one of these worlds question mark and the other sandbox. Okay, so that only took a few seconds and we laid the foundation for our different modes by duplicating entire worlds. If that world had 200 scenes in it, we just saved ourselves weeks of work with that feature. Let's give our players a way to get to these different modes. First, let's copy our main menu so we can use a copy of it and tweak it for our different modes. Let's name it Turbo UI. And let's double click on our main menu UI and start by making sure everything is locked down so we don't accidentally mess up any work we've already done. And let's add a navigation button. We can just drag our graphic in and drop it on the navigation button on the drag and drop wheel and place it below the start button and make sure to name it turbo. It's very, very important at this point that we name everything right away or we could get lost in our mind map in the menu editor. You saw how quick we were able to grow our game and if we start doing that without naming things, it will become a complete nightmare for connecting. So renaming things makes sense and makes it all much easier. Okay, let's click on the menu editor button in the upper left and go back up into the menu editor. And let's connect our turbo button to the new turbo UI. Then double clicking on the turbo UI, let's update some graphics in there. We could just drag any images into the appropriate option on the drag and drop wheel or on items that are already there. We can just update their graphics. Let's make sure that everything is layered properly in the scene tree. Okay, making sure that record is not enabled, let's add a label in our coin tracker font to read turbo. Let's scale it to two, rotate it a bit over the title, and let's give the title a 0.75 opacity, just so Turbo is a little easier to see. And now let's enable record and animate the label to fade in at frame 20. Let's disable record and play the menu. That looks good. Now let's drag in a white version of the main menu button, dropping it on the navigation button option in the drag and drop wheel and change the opacity to 0.8, put it near the bottom, and let's animate that to fade in. Let's make sure it is set to get us to the main menu, and we're good. 
Now let's duplicate this menu for our hard mode when we get to it. Let's go back up into the menu editor and selecting the UI, pressing W, A, S, or D to duplicate it and name the new duplicate hard. Now we can just connect the start button to our turbo UI to the turbo world node. And let's just check one more thing, making sure the game over buttons are routed correctly, that the main menu is set to the main menu and retry is set to restart, which will always restart whichever world you just died in. And then one last setting to adjust. Let's select our turbo world in the menu editor and change the time warp to 75. Now let's have a play with it. This is really fun. So now let's double click on the hard UI and change our turbo label to read hard. And back up in the menu editor, let's connect the start button for the hard UI to the hard world. And let's go into the main menu and drag in our hard mode button, making sure to rename it. Let's make the necessary connections in the menu editor and preview our changes, making sure everything is working perfectly. This looks great, but now we need to go into the hard mode world and make it hard. Kick back and I'll make some adjustments for us. Here are some things you'll notice I'm doing. I'm rearranging mountain enemies, sometimes adding more in the attempt to constrict the area the player has to move through. You'll see I double up on enemies, and I test it with both the scenes aligned and randomized to see if not only the scenes work, but one works with all the rest, because if it's impossible, that's no good. We want hard mode, not throw the device against the wall mode. And for enemies, I could also adjust their spawn times and speeds, but I think I'll just increase the time warp by 7 or so to achieve a similar increase in difficulty. We could always go in and make those manual changes if we wanted to. All right, let's take a look at our new hard mode. This is great, so now we've got two additional game modes to play, but what would be really neat is if we allowed these modes to be something the player could work for. So let's change the start buttons on our Turbo UI and Hard UI to be lock buttons. Let's double click on our Turbo UI and select our start button and delete it. Now let's drag a lock button into the menu. Lock buttons can be set up to be unlocked using in-game currency like coins or as an in-app purchase for real money. Let's start by naming the button Start and dragging in our Start button graphic into the image option. And then we need an image to display while it is still locked, something that communicates its cost. Now let's scroll down and set its price. I'm going to make it 10 coins so it's easier to demo for you, but you would of course make it match the communicated cost. Okay, let's repeat the process for the hard UI. Let's delete the old start button, drag in the lock button, get the appropriate images in order, set the price, go back out and make sure it's all connected and play our game. This works perfectly. Now in the next video, we are going to create a coin shop and discuss some things that can go in there. 
and we're going to cook up a way for players to buy characters in that shop. So come on back for that one, and I will see you in part eight.